Hey friends, and welcome back to another weekly energy video. I'm Grace. This is the Intuitive Lens channel for weekly astrology and collective tarot readings. It's the week of August 7th through the 13th. We are passing through what is the alleged Lionsgate portal. I'm sure you have maybe heard of um, this portal. Um, really, that's more of like an, a numerology thing than an astrological thing. However, there are some astrological transits this week that point to and uh, that that can align with this eight eight uh, gate, if you will. Um, eight is the number of transformation. If we look at the eighth house on the zodiac wheel, it's ruled by Scorpio natively. It is the house of shared intense experiences. So sex, death, transformation. But also things like, you know, debts, shared debts. Uh, for example, like student loans and the ties to the people who are co-signed on any sort of loans or big things like that. Shared human intense experiences. That's the number eight. It is also a number of like evolution. Okay, so what is being called to, to be transformed in our life? And I've been getting a lot of this message regarding the nodal shift and our north node being in Aries, this call to bravery. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is the beginning of something new. In some ways, this nodal shift is the beginning of a new complete cycle for the nodes. You could see it this way. So in Leo, by the way, right, we're in Leo season, the sun, which is why it's called Lion's Gate 8-8, eight, eight, is like this call to bravery, the lion, the brave lion, right? We have this like mythology around this animal. So I pulled out, by the way, my um, spirit animal Animal Spirit Guides Oracle Deck and my Sacred Traveler Oracle Deck to pull some messages around those as well at the end of this reading or rather at the beginning of the tarot reading that we'll do after this astrology update. So just be thinking this week about what in your life is calling to be transformed and how can you initiate or that transformation? Um... Another astrologer that I really admire and that I learn with and from said it just requires 20 seconds of your bravery or like 20 seconds of your crazy bravery. What, what kind of things can happen in 20 seconds? A decision can be made. A declaration can be made. And that's it. Or it's, what's being asked of us is not to suddenly expect and to suddenly become all of what we wish to be, but rather just to take that first step. It's a commitment energy. It's a declaration energy. It's saying, my dream is not a dream. It's a plan. And this is how much I believe in myself. This is how much I believe in what I'm doing and what I'm called to do. And that's the kind of bravery and dare I say competence embodied by Leo and that's what we're working with this week. So let me read from my notes. I'm just going to give you a few more themes to look out for um, that may or may not resonate with you. Um, here we go. Sun square Jupiter at the top of the week. That is that self-confidence. Yeah. It's also potentially overindulgence. But think of this as breakthrough energy. Okay. The sun Again, Leo and Aries embodied with the sun energy and Jupiter, that's ninth house, that's growth. So when we encounter challenges, how do we see those things, those situations as areas for growth? That is your aha moment when you can break through that. Last quarter moon in Taurus this week on 8-8. Eight, eight. Accept change as a part of life. Accept yourself so it is easier to be in the world. This, a lot of messages this week are about self-acceptance and not even self-acceptance, but more than that to say, all of my experiences have made me who I am today and what I am today. I'm going to honor and cherish those experiences and take the medicine from them and realize that those things that have affected me are for my growth, are for my growth. 
therefore my development. We have uh, Chiron transits later in the week that I will get to, but I'm going to go in order here. Venus square Uranus. This is a surprise. Uranus, Uranus is a surprise. Square is a challenge. Venus, love, beauty. So we might be feeling or coming into that aha moment regarding what this Venus retrograde is wanting to show us, to teach us in terms of reimagining um, things, reimagining what is possible with our lives, what we want in our lives. This is a disruptive energy. At the same time, Venus is conjunct Lilith. This is like this idea of like beauty and the breakdown. There's so much beauty in even the destructive things in life that allow things or that make things to so that they fall apart. I think about, I forget what the word is, but this idea that something is more beautiful for having been broken. And it, it reduces things to its essence. We are in a time where simplifying things is the name of the game. And so when things are broken, what do we think? I think of something is broken, something's falling away. What's left is the foundation. When we can see the foundation without all of the extras, with all the bippity bops, then we can work on the foundation and build something stronger. This is the energy of this week. Mercury, Trine, Jupiter. Mercury's in Virgo right now. It's going retrograde at the end of the month and Jupiter's in Taurus. This is about our inspiration, our creative potential, finding stability in our mental, mental capacity. A theme that showed up last week that is we're working through this week again is that Eight of Swords, this like mental block, this realizing when our minds are not our best friends and are actually keeping us small and afraid and preventing us from seeing that our lives are valuable, are appreciable, um, and are good. They're good. So you're seeing the beauty in the breakdown, understanding, finding understanding and compassion. We're seeing beyond ego. Um, this is about connections. Venus, so Venus Kazemi is happening, which is when the sun is conjunct Venus. This is in Leo. Again, all that Venus has to offer us during this time, during its retrograde and just in, in this season while it's in Leo, is being shined upon by the sun. We are seeing what it is all for and what it is all about. At that same time, that's over the weekend, uh, the 12th, 13th, the moon is in Cancer. So we find stability in knowing ourselves and knowing our emotions. Knowing how we feel about something is something we can trust. Um, okay, last thing I'll say and then we'll move on. The wound is a part of the attraction. I'm sort of dipping into next week's energy a little bit, but that's just how it works. Sun trine Chiron, and then a couple days later, Venus trine Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. It's, it suggests that that which we come to heal for ourselves, we can teach others along the same path. Heal yourself is to heal the world. So what do the Sun and Venus have to teach us about Chiron in these very easy uh, trine, aspects it's a very flowing energy so we're learning about our wounds we're realizing that even though we are imperfect we are perfect and whole through our imperfection we are whole and so seeing and appreciating that about yourself is a mirror we see that in in other people we can see we 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 are filled with compassion and empathy for the other as well we start treating each other differently this is about self-love, confidence, appreciation. This may lead to fruitful collaborations, whether with it's a whether with whether it is with a lover or a, um, a life partner or a work relationship. This is the mutual appreciation of each other's vulnerabilities. Mutual appreciation of each other's vulnerabilities. Uh, okay, let's do a little reading. I had in the comments of my last video, somebody asking me to do Libra monthly. I had thought for a while um, to do Zodiac readings, but then 
really ultimately was like, no, I don't want to give myself too much to do, but I do want to do them. It's just that I feel I'm in a good place in terms of how much I'm doing right now on the channel. But if the, if the channel were to grow and more people want readings, I would love to show up for you in that way. You just got to let me know. So if I did Zodiac readings, for example, the signs that I feel most closely connected with are, well, Libra is actually one of them. Um, Scorpio and Gemini, Gemini. And I'll say Capricorn, those four are really uh, prevalent in my life. They're energies I'm very familiar with. They don't elude me. They're, um, they're around. And so if you're any of those four signs and you wanna see a Zodiac reading each month, I want you to do me a favor and drop me a line in the comments below and just let me know. I need your feedback to grow the channel and to make it um, great and to provide you with what you want. So let me know in the comments below or if it's a different zodiac sign and none of what, let's say I don't have any hits for Capricorn but I have, a, I have you know, a number of hits for Pisces, which I didn't list, then just let me know that because I will consider it. All for consideration. Thank you so much for listening to my TED Talk. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'm very grateful for all the new followers, the new likes, any, any and all of the likes. I love you guys so much. It is truly a pleasure of mine to sign on each week and do this for the collective. So here we go with our spirit animal guides. Who do we want to help guide us today? The manatee accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. Well, there's our theme of acceptance showing up indeed. I'm gonna show you the card. Accept the situation for what it is instead of trying to change it. Manatee is in the water, go with the flow. Go with the flow. And now we have our sacred oracle traveler deck. Let's see where we go with this one. What did he want to say? Well, only two cards came up there. Valiant courage. Like I was saying, take action with passion. 20 seconds of your crazy bravery is all that is needed. Hmm. It feels like a release. I feel like there's something that's been pent up for so long, something that either hasn't been said or hasn't been <sighs> released in a really long time that would be, feel really good just to release. And so if you resonate with that, realize you, you know, you can do this. You can do this. Anytime we be, oh, look at the cards at the bottom of the decks. Wow. Begin now. I was about to say, begin now and the unicorn. Indulge your creative, imaginative, and magical side through some form of artistic expression. Okay, so maybe you want to get creative with this message, with this release that you have. Like, um, I don't know <laughs> who this is for, but likely you're a creative person. And what I was going to say is that Anytime, you know, courage is required anytime we begin something new. So I love this begin now energy. Just take the first step. That's all this, this week is wanting to tell us. Take that first step, y'all. Okay, I've got my tarot cards here. By the way, I, I am still working on, in my mind, this is all in my mind. I'm gonna begin now, soon on this idea of mine to do in-person events in Chicago. I haven't really been doing them. I've gone on retreats and done workshops on retreats. I do things online mm, from time to time. I mean, I have this channel, but then sometimes I'll do full moon ceremonies online or new moon or a group Reiki. I mean, so if you're interested in in-person stuff, I would say go to my website and subscribe to my newsletter. It's not something I use right now, so don't worry, you're not gonna get a ton of emails. But just so that I know if I was going to send a message out about an in-person event, if you're in Chicago, specifically, 
uh, then go ahead and do that. Six of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. Yep. Come on now. Anything else? That's a lot. That's a lot going on here. Yeah, I feel like they're not gonna like sugarcoat or anything, but like it is gonna be a lot of work, this thing that you want. And it feels like there's a lot of resistance to even being available for this thing that you want to do. You need to work on your self-confidence hardcore. This is about what is the voice in your head? Where can you draw support from? It's almost like the things around you, the um, what is currently in your purview, whether it's physically or mentally, the environmental influences are such that they're not really encouraging you. So I would say this, if this is an issue of building up self-confidence, go spend time with people who value you highly rather than not as much. Just change your, change your environment. Um, spend time around people who love you, who, who will support you and not push you, um, but rather will say, take this at your own pace, um, but begin, begin now. So let's go ahead and start our reading here. King of Swords, yep, you know the way, you know the truth, don't need any validation. Queen of Cups, Page of Wands, both in reverse. This is about getting in touch with yourself, your intuition. Um, your um, possibly this is like over using too much logic for something that is innately spiritual, using your mind and trying to scientifically quantify something that is innately spiritual. The magician. Yeah. If you look at it that way. Okay. So maybe I see. This is best approached through a spiritual lens versus the thinking mind. If you go if you go directly to thinking and through that route alone, of course, there will be some blocks. There will you will, there will there will appear to be some blocks because this is the what we're working through the eight of swords energy from last week. Uh, mental entrapment. Our minds, if our minds don't, can't think of a way through, if we can't, you know, with the mind, I would also say imagination and visualization. The queen of cups here is sort of scrying into her cup. So if you're somebody who oftentimes um, visualizes things in order to manifest them, don't think that you're tied off from that which you want because that visualization is having trouble to emerge or something like that. You do have what you need. You do have what you need. It's, it's about, so some of the resources that you have, the Magician Reverse, that I feel, I feel like is Mercury Retrograde showing up there. Let's just finish getting all the cards. Uh, Knight of Cups, the Tower, Six of Pentacles in Reverse. Okay, okay, okay. There is another person here, and I feel like the if this is about a person, another person, that you want to offer something to, for example, because we have King of Swords, the Magician in Reverse, and the Knight of Cups. It's sort of saying, like, you know that you want to approach them, you know that you want to have this offer, but the magician in reverse is suggesting you don't have what you need. Okay, we're, we're feeling like that lack. This might be simply a lack of confidence um, if we're pulling from our astrological influences from earlier. And then this other person, I feel like they're doing the work of understanding themselves better. They're ready to move on 
because they're experiencing like this big wash, this big clearing. And so it's almost like there is this misalignment. I, I feel um, you are on different paths, I believe. Let me get some more messages around. Um, three of wands this is like three weeks if there is gonna if something is gonna happen in the timing position we have the three of wands it would be within the next three weeks or so but i want to know more about this two of swords why is the two of swords here look at that um eight of wands sorry not eight of wands eight of swords the mental entrapment card it looks like this it is upside down is it going to focus? There it is. It's upside down. It's showing it upside down here. E so I would take that as like even more of a call to healing that um, mental affliction of it's just not going to be possible. I feel like if you want to take the chance, Wheel of Fortune, you're going to know when it's right. I feel like if it's meant to, the, you know, the Wheel of Fortune basically says, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. What else do I want to clarify here? Um, the Knight of Pentacles. That was fast. Knight of Wands. Take action with passion. Where did that appear? Oh, right. Valiant Courage. Take action with passion. I don't know, man. This sort of is feeling like this, this, if your brain will ever give you, <laughs> if you can get your brain to give you a break um, from that thinking mind and move more with what you feel, this may be a great way to work with the energy of this week. On 8-8, eight, eight, highly recommend. If you want to utilize the energy of this portal, as they call it, write down your dreams and write them as if they were your plan so your three month plan six month plan one year plan five year plan if you dare go that far if you want to but what is your plan for your life don't think about what is happening right now think about where you want to be who you want to be surrounded by what it feels like, and then take the first step. I think the first step is admitting that you want those things. So write it in a letter, and then let me know how that goes. Okay, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Remember there is a um, recommended listening in the description box below. I love to jam out to some music. So I'm gonna pick a song that sort of feels like what we got going on this week. Okay, bye.